You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. The options market can be a confusing place. Sorting through the daily avalanche of data, alerts, updates, articles, and analysis to find the most important information is an overwhelming prospect. But now you have help. Welcome to the Options News Rundown, the only program that breaks through the noise to bring you the most important news and information from the world of options. Every day, we bring you the top five option stories curated by the options experts at theoptionsinsider.com, the premier source for options information. The Options News Rundown is brought to you by Market Taker Mentoring, the leader in options trading education. Get trader education, daily trade ideas, and more with a free one-week trial of Market Taker Mentoring's Live Advantage Group coaching class by visiting markettaker.com slash insider. And now it's time to break through the noise. It's time for your Options News Rundown. Good morning. Today is Monday, April 15th, 2019. This is your Options News Rundown. I'm Dan Passarelli. Our first story today is from investing.com. It's the top five things to know in the market on Monday. The first thing to know is Goldman and Citigroup are set to report Q1 earnings. Goldman Sachs and Citigroup will be the market focus on Monday as both banks report first quarter earnings ahead of the opening bell. Those are out. They'll be followed by Bank of America on Tuesday and Morgan Stanley on Wednesday. JP Morgan set the bar high on Friday with record revenue and profit in the first quarter, setting a positive tone for earnings season. That flew in the face of expectations for a generally disappointing quarter. Fact set, expects earnings for companies in the S&P 500 to decline 4.2%, which would be the first year-over-year decline since the second quarter of 2016. The second thing to know is global stocks pause near a six-month high. Caution reigned in global equity markets on Monday after stocks ended at a six-month high last week and traders looked ahead to a holiday shortened week full of earnings and key economic data. Although most major financial markets will be closed on Friday for the start of the Easter holidays, several companies are set to report earnings stateside, while the U.S. will also produce economic updates on the housing market, retail sales, industrial production, and trade. China will grab the spotlight on Wednesday as it releases its first quarter economic growth figures. Elsewhere, European stock market struggled to hold gains despite a round of M&A that supported sentiment. Earlier, Asian stocks were mixed, with China's Shanghai deposit off 0.3%, while Japan's Nikkei ended 1.4% higher. The second thing to know today is Trump blames the Fed for subdued stocks and Draghi backs Powell. U.S. President Donald Trump took another shot at Federal Reserve policy over the weekend, blaming interest rate hikes and quantitative tightening for putting the brakes on stocks and growth. If the Fed had done its job properly, which it has not, the stock market would have been up 5,000 to 10,000 additional points. And and GDP would have fallen well over 4%, Trump tweeted on Sunday. I am not making this stuff up. European Central Bank President Mario Draghi had already come out on Saturday to show his support for the U.S. Central Bank. After several prior attacks from Trump against the Fed, Draghi noted that he was certainly worried about central bank independence, and especially in the most important jurisdiction in the world. Fourth thing to know today is oil dips ahead of OPEC meeting. 
An increase in U.S. drilling activity was enough to put oil bulls on pause Monday, while traders looked forward to a meeting of major oil producers to take place this week. Oil ministers from OPEC, Russia, and other major exporting countries will meet in Vienna on Wednesday and Thursday to decide on production policy for the next six months. Reports suggest the group will put off a concrete decision on whether to extend an agreement on output restraint that has been a major factor behind oil's rallies so far this year. Saudi Arabia has argued that an extension is still necessary, while Russia in particular has signaled that it doesn't agree. U.S. crude oil futures fell 55 cents or 0.9 percent to $63.34 by 5.44 a.m. Eastern, while Brent oil traded down 52 cents or 0.7 percent to $71.03. After oil notched yet another weekly gain, data from Baker Hughes showed on Friday that the weekly rig count, an indicator, an early indicator of future output in the U.S., rose by two units last week after the previous week's 15 rig climb. The longer oil prices stay at their current elevated level, the likelier it is that U.S. shale producers will increase output, offsetting OPEC-led efforts to reduce supply. The fifth thing to know today is IMF spring meeting ends with hopes for economic rebound. Global finance chiefs ended the spring meetings of the International Monetary Fund and World Bank on a cautiously optimistic note at the weekend. Officials voiced concern over the slowdown in the global economy, but expressed confidence that a rebound is around the corner. They cited a generalized step back from tightening monetary policy by global central banks, along with increased stimulus from China and easing trade tensions between Washington and Beijing. Our second story here today is a follow-up, let you know what's going on with the gold mine Sachs. Uh, it's from investing.com. Goldman Sachs sees shares drop as Q1 revenue misses. Goldman Sachs beat earnings expectations for the first quarter, but tougher market conditions saw revenue fall more than expected. The firm reported earnings per share of $5.71 on revenue of $8.81 billion. Analysts polled by Investing.com forecast earnings per share of $4.89 on revenue of $8.93 billion. At 8.07 a.m. Eastern, shares in Goldman Sachs were down 0.6% to $206.63 in pre-market trade. The decline in total revenue was due to weaker performance in the Industrial Client Services Division, where net revenues on fixed income, currency, and commodities saw a drop of 11% compared with the first quarter of 2018. Goldman's Investment and Lending Division saw a 14% decline from the same period last year. And our final story today is from Investing.com. It's the crypto wrap. Digital currency prices slip after hitting 2019 highs. Cryptocurrency prices are down slightly since hitting a 2019 high last Wednesday on news that Visa is launching a crypto card with Coinbase. The market paused as investors wait to see if digital currencies can continue to hold on to their momentum. Last Wednesday, the total cryptocurrency market capitalization hit a year-to-date high of $186 billion, according to CoinMarketCap, after pulling back. The upward trend started in April after Bitcoin prices skyrocketed for no apparent reason, and virtual coins seem to be holding on to those gains. Bitcoin fell 1.2% in the last seven days, $5,144.10, despite surging to a 2019 high of $5,372 on the Investing.com index on Wednesday. Cryptocurrencies overall were at $176 billion at the time of this writing. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is news you could use for today, Monday, at the Ides of April 2019. Uh, your Options News Rundown. I'm Dan Passarelli. Trade smart and have a great week. 
The Options News Rundown is brought to you by Market Taker Mentoring, the leader in options trading education. Get trader education, daily trade ideas, and more with a free one-week trial of Market Taker Mentoring's Live Advantage Group coaching class by visiting markettaker.com slash insider. The preceding program was a production of the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the Options Insider or via questions at theoptionsinsider.com.